All right, so we're all familiar with titrations, and therefore I just want to make note, of course, that in today's lab, our goal will be using those same techniques that we have discussed before to determine, right, the acid content um, in fruit juices. And so in today's lab, you're going to be provided with two fruit juice. So I'm going to be giving you, of course, a sample of orange juice, likewise a sample, of course, of lemonade. And so you probably can already guess, but the goal hopefully before you um, complete this experiment, right, is that you want to determine what is the mass of citric acid per milliliters. And so at the end, you're going to be reporting the mass, the grams of citric acid, right, per ml. Now, in each experiment, you're actually starting off with 10 mLs. So we're going to be using 10 ml right, of each of the fruit juice. We're going to dilute it with, a, um, with about 10 ml of water, and then we're going to proceed with the titration. But I need to make a few note of a few things here. Please recognize right, that citric acid is actually not the only acid that's present, of course, in our fruit juice. However, we're making this huge assumption, right, that the only acid that is present is citric acid. So I need for you to note that assumption when you write up your lab report. And so, just as before, our acid, which of course is citric acid, here's of course the molar mass, right? We can determine, of course, that concentration in grams per milliliter by means of a titration. And so we're measuring our what, 10 ml, actually, just one decimal place because I'm using a graduated cylinder. 10 mLs, of course, of our citric acid. Again, that's my assumption, right? And I'm going to be titrating that, of course, with what? Sodium hydroxide. Well, you're given the molarity of your sodium hydroxide solution. It is 0.098 molar. And so we know for certain that if we know the moles of sodium hydroxide, again, right, we can determine what? the moles of the other reactant or product in a balanced equation. And so from the, our experiment, you need to first, first calculate what the volume, of course, of sodium hydroxide that was used in your titration. And from the volume and the molarity, we can also calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide. However, I also need for you to take a minute to note what? That the moles of sodium hydroxide in this experiment is actually not equal to, right, the moles, of course, of citric acid. Why not? Well, because, of course, in this balanced chemical equation, right, we're in what? We're here, of course, we have a three to one, right, mole-mole relationship. And so from your moles of sodium hydroxide, my goal, hopefully, using that mole-mole relationship, you can determine the moles of citric acid. And of course, former moles of citric acid, you can also find what? Well, the grams, right, of citric acid. However, that's the grams of citric acid that supports in what? Well, that's in 10 mLs. So how are you gonna find the grams, of course, uh, per mL? Well, you're gonna take this mass and just divide through, right, by our total volume, 10 mLs, and then at the end, you can report the grams of citric acid per milliliter. And hopefully, from this information, you can conclude that of the two, which is more acidic, right? Is it, of course, what? Orange juice, or of course, is that lemon juice? I'm hopeful that you can predict that, just honestly, based, of course, on what? On, of course, um, the taste, right? How, of course, sour, right? Because acid, as we talk about, when we talk about acids, of course, that tartness enables to determine, of course, right, um, that acid strength. All right, so in this experiment, we're um, going to be looking, of course, at the acid content in both, of course, orange juice, as well as, of course, lemonade, to determine, of course, of the two, right, which is the most acidic. Um, and so we're going to be reporting our answer at the end, of course, in grams, right, per milliliter. And so in both cases, I'm going to be using about 10 ml, of course, of my fruit juice. I'm going to transfer that to, of course, my um, Erlenmeyer flask. And then I'm going to rinse my um, burette, right? I'm sorry, I'm going to rinse my graduated cylinder, wonderful, with, of course, 10 ml um, of water. Uh, uh. 
And so again, after, of course, dilute, diluting, of course, with a 10 ml of water, I'm gonna go ahead and add, of course, a few drops of our indicator phenylphthalein. Again, two to three drops of that indicator. The barrette, of course, is filled with our sodium hydroxide solution. And so again, slowly, right, I'm gonna be adding the base sodium hydroxide. This burette, of course, is void of any, the tip is void of any air bubble. And so I'm gonna be adding sodium hydroxide again slowly, right, to my acidic solution, my fruit juice. Care, as always, must be taken, right? And I'm gonna look, of course, at the first sign in which the solution changes color. I'm only using 10 ml. Right, that was my original volume of my fruit juice. So I'm not expecting, of course, to add too much sodium hydroxide. Um, just as we did last semester, as we near that end point, we want to make sure that we add our solution right gradually. Okay, so I'm going to proceed now, adding of course my NaOH about one drop at a time. So I'm just going to try my best to control the rate of addition. Might just be a bit soon. So now you'll notice, of course, that there, there is a color change, right? After we've added, of course, um, our sodium hydroxide solution. And so please make a note um, that we, we the volume, this final volume is actually 11 point, of course, 1 right, milliliters. Um, and just for comparison, um, so that we're all aware that there is, of course, a color change. So here's my original sample of orange juice. And so you can now see, it's, it's very challenging, right, to note, of course, um, you're not going to see that faint pink color, because, of course, orange juice, of course, is yellow to start with. But you can now certainly see, of course, that the solution is um, darker. So what I did, I kept on adding the sodium hydroxide, right, until, of course, there was, of course, a, an initial color change. I'm going to be repeating um, this now, of course, with our um, lemonade. So the second part of the experiment, um, we're moving on, we're going to be looking, of course, at orange, I'm sorry, and lemonade, forgive me. And so again, I have um, pre-measured 10 ml of lemonade, I've transferred to my Erlenmeyer flask, and then to that I'm going to dilute my solution again, right, with 10 ml of water. Here goes our few drops of indicator. And then I'm going to proceed, right, again with our titration, making note that the tip of the barrette is filled. Okay. And so, of course, lemonade is a clear solution. And so the good thing is that we should therefore be able to readily observe, right, that color change. Now, of course, um, the, now the titration is complete. You, you'll notice, of course, that the solution is, um, there is a color change. It's honestly um, faint pink in color, right? And the final volume is 9.80 milliliters. So the final burette right rating is 9.80 milliliters. Now, I, I need for you to keep in mind, of course, that I did purchase and the same brand, right, of fruit juice. So not only did I take care to make sure, of course, um, that there were different juices, 
but I stuck to the same brand. Now, please do not leave her thinking that uh, in all cases, one is more acidic than the other, right? Because that doesn't necessarily mean the same, right? It really depends, of course, on the manufacturer and, of course, on the ingredients.